Imagine a world where Neanderthals were the dominant species in both Europe and Asia. Freaks of nature endowed with incredible physical gifts and an almost mystical connection to their environment. Their stocky builds, immense strength and acute senses would have made them formidable hunters and warriors. They could exert immense physical strength, essential for hunting large Ice Age animals like mammoths and woolly rhinoceroses. Their thick skulls and robust facial structures further suggest they were built to withstand physical trauma, whether from hunting dangerous prey or navigating rugged terrain. These traits, while specialized, made them formidable competitors in a world that tested survival at every turn. Paleoanthropologist Xu Jie Wu from the Chinese Academy of Sciences and anthropologist Christopher Bai in a new paper have proposed a provocative new theory. Some human fossils from Asia may be Neanderthals. We already know that Neanderthals migrated all the way to the Altai Mountains, a mountain range in Central and East Asia where Russia, China, Mongolia and Kazakhstan converge. But just how large was their geographic range? The Marba Cranium and the Narmada Cranium are two critical fossils from the Middle Pleistocene that have provoked considerable debate regarding their classification. While traditionally they have been categorized simply as archaic hominins, their anatomical features and temporal context suggest potential evolutionary links to Neanderthals. This video explores the evidence for and against their classification as Neanderthals, examining their anatomical traits, environmental adaptations, and the broader implications for understanding human evolution during this period. The Maba skull, from southeastern China, and Narmada skull, from India, have been grouped together in various studies, though these fossils have yet to receive a formal taxonomic name. According to some researchers, Marba and Narmada may ultimately find their way to be included in the broader Homo neanderthalensis species, particularly given early suggestions that Marba was a Neanderthal. The Marba cranium was discovered in 1958 in Guangdong province, China, and has been dated to approximately 120,000 to 140,000 years ago. Found in a limestone cave alongside Pleistocene fauna, the fossil consists of a partial skull with a prominent brow ridge, a relatively flat face, and an estimated cranial capacity of 1,300 cubic centimetres. This places it within the lower range of Neanderthals and archaic Homo sapiens. Meanwhile, the Narmada cranium, unearthed in 1982 near the Narmada River in India, dates to around 150,000 to 200,000 years ago. This fossil is also a partial skull, with a cranial capacity of 1,200 to 1,400 cubic centimetres. Its thick cranial bones and robust build have drawn comparisons to both Homo erectus and archaic Homo sapiens. Despite their geographic and temporal separation, these two fossils share key similarities that make them critical for exploring the evolutionary connections between Neanderthals and archaic human populations in Asia. Marba exhibits several traits that suggest a potential connection to Neanderthals. Its prominent brow ridge is one of the most notable features, bearing some resemblance to Neanderthal morphology. Its cranial capacity falls within the range of Neanderthals, though on the lower end. Furthermore, its occipital region shows slight bulging, a feature often associated with Neanderthal skulls. However, significant differences complicate this classification. Marba lacks the pronounced mid-facial prognathism that is a hallmark of Neanderthals. This absence of forward-projecting facial features aligns it more closely with other archaic humans or transitional populations. Moreover, the geographic location of Marba in southern China raises questions about the easternmost extent of Neanderthal migration and whether its Neanderthal-like traits could be explained by parallel evolution or gene flow rather than direct ancestry. The Narmada cranium presents a similarly ambiguous case. Its robust cranial features, including thick cranial bones and a strong occipital region, bear some resemblance to Neanderthals. Its cranial capacity also overlaps with the Neanderthal range, suggesting an evolutionary connection. Nonetheless, like Marba, it lacks some of the defining features of Neanderthals, such as a pronounced brow ridge and mid-facial prognathism. These differences suggest that Narmada might represent a distinct lineage of archaic humans, rather than a direct offshoot of Neanderthals. Additionally, 
the tropical environment of central India, where Narmada was found, contrasts with the colder climates typically associated with Neanderthals, raising questions about whether these populations adapted differently to their environments or evolved independently. The relationship between Maba and Narmada is particularly intriguing when considered in the broader context of human evolution in Asia. Both fossils represent transitional populations that exhibit a mosaic of traits, combining archaic and derived features. Their cranial capacities, robust builds, and intermediate morphological traits suggest they may have occupied an evolutionary space between Homo erectus and modern Homo sapiens. While they share some similarities with Neanderthals, such as robust cranial features, their divergence from classic Neanderthal morphology points to the complexity of human evolution in Asia during the Middle Pleistocene. One reason that classification of the skulls has been problematic is that they are more gracile than most Neanderthal skulls. An often overlooked but obvious conclusion is the skull are female, hence their more gracile appearance. In fact, the Marber cranium has been compared to the Sacco Pastore one skull from Italy and the enigmatic Steinheim skull from Germany, both likely early female Neanderthals. In any case, the possibility that Marba and Namada represent regional variants of Neanderthals raises important questions about the geographic range of this species. Neanderthals are traditionally thought to have been confined to Europe, the Levant and parts of Western Asia. However, genetic evidence of Neanderthal admixture in modern Asian populations suggests that Neanderthals may have had a broader range than previously assumed. If Maba and Namada represent eastern populations of Neanderthals, their morphology may reflect adaptations to local environments or interactions with other hominin populations. This possibility aligns with the growing body of evidence that Middle Pleistocene Asia was a dynamic region where gene flow between different hominin groups played a significant role in shaping evolutionary trajectories. Both fossils could represent populations that retained Neanderthal traits through limited gene flow, while also evolving features specific to their environments. This interpretation would support the idea of a complex web of interbreeding and interaction among hominins during this period, contributing to the genetic and morphological diversity observed in modern humans. The classification of Maba and Narmada as Neanderthals has broader implications for understanding human evolution in Asia. If these fossils are confirmed as Neanderthals or their regional variants, it would expand the known geographic range of this species and provide evidence of their adaptability to diverse climates and conditions. It would also reinforce the idea of extensive interbreeding and gene flow between hominin populations during the Middle Pleistocene, contributing to the genetic legacy of modern humans. On the other hand, if Maba and Narmada represent independent lineages or hybrid populations, they underscore the complexity of human evolution in Asia and the need for a more nuanced understanding of how regional populations interacted and evolved. These fossils highlight the diversity and complexity of hominin evolution in Asia during the Middle Pleistocene, challenging simplistic models of human ancestry. Further research, particularly involving ancient DNA analysis, will be essential to clarifying their evolutionary relationships and their role in the broader story of human evolution. In conclusion, the Maba and Narmada crania occupy a critical place in the study of human evolution, particularly in the context of Neanderthal classification. While they share some traits with Neanderthals, their lack of key defining features and their distinct geographic and environmental contexts suggest they may represent hybrid populations rather than classic Neanderthals. The severely battered archaic skull discovered in Maba, China also provides one of the earliest documented instances of human aggression, while also indicating that the ancient perpetrators may have displayed a compassionate aspect. This revelation is founded upon the analysis of CT scans conducted on the fossilized remains referred to as Maba woman. The scans detected a cranial fracture resulting from a blunt impact. According to a recent study, it is likely that the victim was struck with a weapon such as a stone, a heavy bone or a piece of wood. The impact most certainly resulted in hemorrhaging and a concussion, leading to symptoms such as nausea, vomiting 
and potentially even cerebral impairment, rendering her vulnerable and incapacitated. However, the scans also indicated that the wound finally underwent healing and that Maba woman survived for several years following the incident. This suggests that the injured woman was probably provided with care after her injury. The bone exhibited inward depression, exerting pressure on the surrounding soft tissue. Yet, she managed to endure for an extended duration, and it was not the direct cause of her eventual demise. The scientists report that despite the possibility of accidental injuries, contemporary forensic technology and other data strongly suggest the involvement of foul play. This injury bears a striking resemblance to the injuries commonly seen today when someone is forcefully struck by a large, blunt item. It could perhaps be the earliest known instance of interpersonal violence and trauma caused by humans that has been recorded. Another potential scenario is that Marba could have encountered an animal. The researchers are uncertain if a deer antler, although of suitable dimensions, would possess sufficient force to fracture her skull. Notwithstanding this setback, the archaeological findings indicate that the Marba woman survived until her forties, which is considered a relatively advanced age for an ancient human. The researchers asserts that her recuperation corroborates findings from other paleontological investigations, indicating that Neanderthals and other prehistoric humans, despite their frequent displays of aggression, also exhibited a sense of compassion for their ailing and defenseless counterparts. Presumably, she required a period of recuperation and assistance with nourishment and culinary tasks. In a hunting-gathering civilization, she would heavily rely on the assistance of others. Indeed, her rehabilitation would have required a significant amount of time, potentially spanning several days or even weeks. Neanderthals, with their deep ties to the Ice Age landscapes of Eurasia, would have possessed an intuitive understanding of the natural world, one we could only describe as primal genius. This ability may have guided their hunting strategies, allowing them to track prey with uncanny precision or anticipate the shifts in the seasons without conscious thought. And yet, what if Neanderthals had their own forms of intelligence that we simply could not comprehend? Their seemingly simple tools and rudimentary ornaments might hide a deeper understanding of the world, one that our ancestors dismissed in our rush to dominate the world. Thank you for watching. Please share your comments. We like to know your thoughts. And as always, please like and subscribe.